Uh, here with me to discuss it all in New York, Caitlin Huey Burns from Real Clear Politics. And in Washington, we have Stephen Shepard from Politico. We appreciate the time of you both. Caitlin, I want to start with you, Haver. You heard what Major Garrett had to say. What do you think Walker's endorsement of Cruz might mean? Well, uh, Major Garrett brought up a great point about how this kind of galvanizes the anti-Trump forces in Wisconsin. Ted Cruz has been very savvy about uh, campaigning in Wisconsin. He's kind of treating it like Iowa in some respects. He's going really to every corner. He's picked off certain congressional districts where he believes that he can uh, <clears throat> do well and pick up delegates in certain areas. So he's been campaigning very hard in the state. I think his endorsement is uh, will serve uh, Ted Cruz in a way that he can say, look, look at the spectrum of support I have within the party. Um, I'm the one that can defeat Trump, not Kasich. Uh, Steve, you know, as we prepare for a Donald Trump event in Janesville, uh, Wisconsin today, the home of uh, House Speaker Paul Ryan, do you see then uh, Donald Trump's perhaps uh, purported uh, seating of the state as a part of some overall strategy of his? Well, I think he, he sees New York on April 19th as far more favorable ground. You know, there will also be uh, primaries in, in states like Pennsylvania on April and Maryland on April 26th. As the race moves more to the east, that's where he's tended to run better. Look at his big win in, in Massachusetts uh, earlier this month. I think he sees that as more favorable terrain. Look, the big thing about Scott Walker's endorsement is it's a signal to Republicans who oppose Trump, who are slightly a slightly larger percentage in Wisconsin. It looks like 65 percent, 60 percent are anti-Trump. It's a signal to them to get behind Ted Cruz and not John Kasich so that the anti-Trump vote isn't split between those two candidates and Donald Trump can't thread the needle there. And I think he's starting to see indications of that. And, and that's why he's looking toward more towards New York, where he can win a majority of the vote potentially, especially in a lot of the uh, congressional districts there, and, and gobble up a lot of delegates. It's also another of these conditional endorsements we've seen. Uh, Walker has been uh, very public in his support and friendship of John Kasich. However, as he now uh, throws his support behind Ted Cruz, Officially interesting about this endorsement as well, Steve, we are seeing it made on radio. To that end, guys, I want to play uh, really the impact, if nothing else, of conservative talk radio in the state of Wisconsin with regard to this race. I'm supporting Senator Cruz, and I've been very critical of your campaigns. How about wives and kids off limits? Well, that's okay. All you have to do is sell that to Cruz. Before you called into my show, did you know that I'm a hashtag never Trump guy? Uh, that I didn't know. Caitlin, Donald Trump has made it one of his missions to see or to foresee how things might go and say, well, mm -hmm. that's, of course, what we expected. We see more of the same here. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Um, although, you know, I would note that conservative radio plays an outsized role in Wisconsin. Um, a lot of people pay attention to it. It's a very conservative as, as it pertains to Republican state. Um, Donald Trump, I think, will, uh, you know, is already looking at these other states, um, kind of, as Major Garrett mentioned, um, he'll be able to to move past Wisconsin and, and look at other states. And he'll, he'll certainly, you know, pick up some delegates in Wisconsin as well, and he still leads that count. Um, but I, I expect him to, um, we saw in Louisiana, he's been, you know, threatening to sue there. I think he'll, he'll you know, portray this in a way that uh, is, is more favorable to him than he, to Cruz. And he's made a point to call that, uh, you know, <clears throat> dirty pool, dirty mm -hmm. tricks being played. However, it seems that these are now tricks he himself is willing to play. He has announced the hiring of Paul Manafort. Mm -hmm. uh, adding him to his campaign as a way of wrangling delegates in advance of what he perhaps thinks could be a contested convention. Manafort mm -hmm. actually has some experience uh, doing this. Uh, what do you right. make then uh, against this draw, uh, framework? What do you make of that, that hire? I think that is a very key hire because it shows uh, an acknowledgement from the Trump campaign that they've kind of um, fallen behind the wheel mm -hmm. or, or fallen asleep behind the wheel a little bit here. Uh, as I mentioned before, Cruz has been very savvy when it comes to delegates and his delegate strategy. And to, um, um, Donald Trump really hasn't, which is pretty remarkable for a front runner at this stage in the campaign that he's now making these hires and now making this investment. It also shows that he has to prepare for an open convention scenario in which um, delegate strategy will play a really key role. And speak to a real disconnect at this point between perhaps what voters have thus far said and what may happen come Cleveland. We can tell you uh, they the endorsement, the official endorsement of Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker for Senator. Uh, 
Ted Cruz has now been made official. So that, uh, again, something that was foreseen and has now come to pass. Uh, Stephen, I want to ask you about uh, that contested convention and this idea that uh, as critical as Donald Trump has been of his, risal, uh, of his rivals, of the process uh, proper, he is now at some point going to have to make this pivot from confrontation to cooperation if he walks into that convention anywhere short of 1237. comes to, to bound delegates and have an opportunity to, to uh, try to persuade some of the unbound delegates, some of the delegates who are open on the first ballot, to try to win there. That's probably his best bet. Once we move past the first ballot and onto a second ballot, if nobody gets a majority, then a lot more delegates become unbound. These are, are party insiders who are probably going to be more hostile to Donald Trump. So his best bet is to try to win as many delegates as possible now. And even if he's short of 1237 after June 7th and the final primaries, he has an opportunity to try to persuade, maybe it's 50, maybe it's 100 of the unbound delegates and try to win there. And, and I think that's what the, the hiring of Paul Manafort and, and the pivot to a convention strategy is going to be all about. Now, in the interim, if he gets shut out in Wisconsin or wins very few delegates, he's going to fall farther behind that pace. And that's why Wisconsin's important, New York is important. All these primaries are really key to see what kind of pace Donald Trump stays at. You know, it's sort of contingent. He needs to win, do pretty well in Wisconsin to stay on pace to getting close to 1237. So uh, Scott Walker's endorsement is a sign that, that they want Ted Cruz to be the main challenger in Wisconsin. That won't be the case when we move east. But uh, we'll have to see if Donald Trump can, how many delegates he can peel off uh, in Wisconsin, which is a, a winner-take-most state. It remains to be seen as well what this uh, GOP consolidation behind Cruz may mean moving forward. Caitlin Huey-Burns and Stephen Shepard, we appreciate the time this morning. Thank you.